anime anthropologist who's been to quite a few conventions and is doing a lot of research into kind of the history and the culture of anime convention fandom. Mm -hmm. So first off, I guess the good question is, what was your first convention? Anime or sci-fi? Uh, either or. Well, sci-fi I've been going to Icon on Long Island since 1998. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was my first experience in convention going, but I used to day trip it. So mm -hmm. it wasn't really the same thing that you get with other conventions. For anime conventions, it was Anime Expo New York in 2002 that my friends sort of dragged me to because they said, you got to see what a real anime con is like. you got to see what a real anime con is like. And I went to that. And then it was Bath. <laughs> <laughs> and it all kind of went from there. Yeah. Um, do you have anything that you particularly like seeing at a lot of conventions like something that one con does that you wish more of them would do, or something like that? Oh, well, I mean, there are always the predictable answers, like programming, panels, masquerade. Mm -hmm. For me, every con is different, and I don't think every con should be the same. I mean, yeah, there are certain cons that really could, could, could have slightly better programming. There are some cons that could have slightly better events, and there are some cons that should do away with the rave altogether. Mm -hmm. but. By and large, every con has its own little thing, so I don't really think that you can judge one con based on another because it just isn't fair at that point. Mm -hmm. Now, you've been going to conventions for quite a while now. Uh, what, what keeps you coming back? The people. Always the people. I mean, I like the amount of escapism that you get from going to a convention. I used to like being able to buy stuff because when I started back in the 90s, the mm -hmm. only place to get anime or really anything was to go to a con. And now it's, I don't go for that anymore. I just go for the people. I go to talk to people, chance encounters in the hallway, meeting new people. This weekend at, at, at PortCon, I, three times, I just bumped into random people and I ended up talking to them for hours and hours and hours on end. And that's really what keeps me going back because I don't really do video rooms. I don't go to any of the announcements. I don't do anything of that sort. I'm mostly in there for the community and the community is what I enjoy. Mm -hmm. Now, do you have a favorite convention store that you like to turn on? I know you have a, lot. a whole panel on that. Is I do con horror stories with Eric Stamer of Toon Zone, and I've had a lot of great experiences. I guess last year, the one that I, one of the stories I love to tell is, is the Pocky Dog Pile incident from Anime mm -hmm. Next, and I'm, I'm walking in between the two buildings. Anime mm -hmm. Next is, there's this little walkway that connects the Double Tree to the um, Guard City Expo Center, and it's it's a Saturday night, I'm walking around with a girl dressed as Jareth from uh, uh, Labyrinth, and I see some girls playing some games. So I'm like, hey girls, Pocky, and I throw that Pocky in the air, and they literally just jump on it. <laughs> and then I see a boom, a streak, and someone was running off around the side of the expo center. And I'm um, okay, that's kind of cool. And that's the story that I just like to tell, because it's just completely funny and irreverent. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, there was the Hitalia incident at Oticon last year where I got dragged into a Hitalia photo shoot because everyone thought I was Austria. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually dressed up as Tom Pertwee's doctor. <laughs> That's a great case of mistaken identity right there. Yeah. Um, is, do you have any... Is there any really lesson that you tell me there's a lot of times that people say, you know, conven anime conventions are hard to break into if you don't know the community. Is there anything you wish more people would know? It's like, oh, if I'd known that when I was going to start, I would have started five years ago. By and large, the attendees at anime conventions are a friendly bunch. I mean, as with any community, you're going to have people that are elitist. As with any community, you're going to have people that try to bring you down. But by and large, I felt more accepted and more welcoming at anime conventions because a lot of the people there are just there to have a good time. They're not there to, to antagonize. They're there to get the same thing that I get. They want their community. They want their friend. They want to make new friends. They want, it's not, they're not really there for the anime most of the time. They're there because, hey, look, there's a lot of people in one place and they're all dorks. Let's go have some fun. And a lot of people seem to think that anime conventions are somehow a closed community. They're really not. They're really very open. And there are a lot of reasons why, but I think community comes to the forefront. And anime conventions have a very strong sense of community, at least from what I've seen, from what I've encountered, from what I've gotten from other people. This weekend, for example, 
most of the time when I've asked people why they like conventions, or they've just volunteer, voluntarily said themselves, they go to conventions because it's fun. They don't go for the fandom, they go for the, for the friendship and the fun, and that is generally something that I've encountered in my own travels. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you say you started going to sci-fi conventions first, and then when it, is there one key element that you think separates the two, or do you think there's uh, there's more similarities? Well, fundamentally, I'd like to think there are more similarities between sci-fi conventions and anime conventions. I mean, when I started, I don't believe there were anime conventions in my area. The D convention in my area was Icon. And there was an anime track there, and the anime kids were kind of all off in the corner, and you didn't see them. And then as I went more and more, it started to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And then the last time I went, which was last year, I, I, I couldn't go this year, I went last year, and the majority of what I saw were anime fans. And the old sci-fi fans were almost nowhere to be seen. And I'd like to think that the communities. The, the idea of community and participation is something that both sides have in common. I just, I don't, I don't have enough experience with science fiction conventions to be able to break them down or look at the populations that go there. I would like to think in a perfect world that two conventions shouldn't be any different. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, look at the presence of science fiction fandom at what were traditionally anime conventions. It's, I guess in my mind, similar to how anime took over science fiction conventions, now you're sort of seeing the reverse happening. And I'd like to think that maybe in a few years there'll just be conventions. Mm -hmm. I know it won't I know that won't be the case, but I'd like to think that they'll just be conventions. Yeah, you, you mentioned Porcon, and that's one convention that Multi it started off as anime and has become kind of geek culture in general. And it seemed to have been working pretty well to it too. This weekend, yeah, I mean, I get the same vibe off of Porcon that I get off Kineticon, and Kineticon openly says it's a multi-fandom convention. Kineticon, one of the things I love about it is they're dedicated to community. I mean, they have music panels for music fandom. They have a great heavy metal panel there every year. They have their Battle on Five open forum discussion. The first time I went, there was a Gargoyles panel. Uh, and then there's, there's all the, they have a big steampunk presence there. That's like a convention, at least in terms of mission statement and execution, that's a convention that I think manages to blend everything together rather flawlessly because you will see crowds of cosplayers of all different kinds of things. I mean, I bumped into a guy there two years ago dressed up as Billy Mays, <laughs> and he was just going around hawking at him, hawking whatever you gave him. If you gave him an anime DVD, he tried to sell it. If you gave him a plunger, he tried to sell it. And I thought that was kind of funny. And he was just a guy who just dressed up as Billy Mays because he wanted to have some fun. Mm -hmm. And. I thought that was pretty cool, and I like the vibe that I get from that. I like the vibe that I got here. I mean, I, I was dressed up as the doctor all weekend, and I was getting stopped every 10 feet for pictures. And then there was the Doctor Who panel yesterday with, with Chris Ayers and J. Michael Tatum that was packed to the hills with all sorts of people who just wanted to sit and talk and converse about that. And I kind of like that vibe. I like that idea that a lot of these people can be fans of many things at once, and just they don't seem to have a problem with it. So, where can people find more information about what you're up to? What I'm up to? Well, uh, you go to my website, uh, studyofanime.com. I have a list of where I'm going to be next. And I have on there just my ruminations and my little essays and my random thoughts. And um, it's just, I want to do, I'm, I'm actually thinking of doing something tomorrow on the long train ride back to New York about um, community and anime conventions, at least just from what I've seen. And. I've got that. I've got my work with uh, Japanese culture. So it's all sitting around on there if you want to click through a long backlog of archives. Well, thank you for taking the time to speak with us. Once again, that's studyofanime.com. Mm -hmm. And be sure to check out what Charles is up to on his website. And that's also my Twitter, at studyofanime. And if you happen to see, see him at a convention and want to tell us a story, be sure to log on to animecons.com and tell us a story.